All right, so here in my office, we'll do another quick video about lessons learned from First Kings. Uh, I'm looking at this again, and um, when you continue reading um, in First Kings, and we're still in chapter two, in fact, uh, First Kings chapter two, verses 21 through 25, uh, you have this story. It actually starts back in uh, verse 13, but you have this story of a guy named Adonijah, um, and he is King Solomon's half brother. Now, by this time. Um, you know, David's died. Solomon's now king. Uh, Adonijah is kind of a little bit jealous uh, because when you read this, you see where he says, hey, the kingdom should have been mine. But, oh, by the way, it was God's will that uh, Solomon is king. So he goes to Bathsheba, uh, Solomon's mother, which you remember last time we talked about mothers, you know, to always give them honor no matter how big you make it. Adonijah goes to Solomon's mother. And says, hey, why don't you talk to the king for me? Why don't you talk to Solomon for me? And because you're his mother, he loves you so much and he'll not deny you. And so Bathsheba, being the good stepmom she was, says, hey, what do you want? Uh, and I'll go talk to him for you. So he says, hey, I want to marry this Shunammite lady. Um, so why don't you go ask the king if I can marry her? And if that, he will give her to me for a wife. And Bathsheba says, okay, seems like a fair request maybe. And so I'll go ask him. So she goes to ask him. Um, and you remember what we talked about last time about you know, David getting off his throne. He bows down and then um, to his mother, Bathsheba brings her a throne. She sits on it at his right hand and says, hey, what do you want, mama? And she begins to ask. And she says, hey, Adonijah came to me and asked me if you will give him the Shunammite woman uh, to marry. And, and Solomon gets enraged. Read it in uh, verses 21 through 25. Um, now I'm putting a little um, my own thoughts in there with that, but you can tell he gets upset um, because he says, well, what else does he want? You want me to give him the kingdom too? How about the priest? How about it goes on this little little uh, diatribe, if you will, about hey, what do you want? You know, what more can I give him? What Bathsheba didn't realize is that Adonijah was trying to kind of sneak in the back way and take more of the kingdom. Um, and so here's the thought: uh, because David, I mean Solomon, he was having no part of it, and Solomon says, "Hey, let God do to me if I don't." Handle this by by dark tonight, by sundown tonight. Let be done to me what I'm going to do to Adonijah if I don't handle this. And the Bible tells us that Solomon sent out and he had Adonijah killed. Uh, he took care of it. Here's my thought. Uh, whenever this lesson I learned from this. Deal with underhanded, deceitful pe people swiftly in your life. If you've got somebody in your life that is, they're deceitful. They're underhanded. Don't let them stay in your life. Get rid of them. Now, certainly I'm not advocating that you have them killed. We can't do that. Uh, that's not right. But that doesn't mean you got to let them stay in your life. You can tell them, say, listen, I'm not going to have you being deceitful in my life, being underhanded, trying to go in around me, trying to get me you know, to do things your way. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't let people do that to you. Deal with them swiftly. Go to them. The New Testament gives us instruction about how to go to them, um, especially if you go to church with them and go to them, uh, go to them with witnesses, then take them uh, to the leadership of the church and then take them before the church. I mean, that's the New Testament way. Uh, and so address the issue. Don't let it lay there. Uh, you know, I've been in church my whole life and one of the things that bothers me most about church is that we have this idea that uh you know, people can do anything and then they can just say, oh, but I love Jesus. Oh, I'm so in love with Jesus. And that's like, that's supposed to excuse it. No, that doesn't excuse bad behavior. What that means is you need to fall more in love with Jesus and get the bad behavior out of your life. Uh, and so if you're a deceitful person, stop it. And then two, if you're allowing deceitful people to be in your life, stop it. Get deceitful people out of your life, underhanded people. You don't need that. You can't grow in the Lord like God wants you to grow uh, with all these deceitful people around you. They'll deceive you. And not only that, but deceitful people are from the enemy. 
Uh, they're, they're straight out of the pits of hell, deceitful people. Uh, the, the spirit that operates in them. So don't let them have, don't let them have place in your life. Stop them from being in your life. Love them in Jesus name, but say, Hey, if you're going to be deceitful, you can't be part of my life. So deal with deceitful people, underhanded people, deal with them swiftly so that you can continue being who God wants you to be. So I hope you enjoyed that today. God bless you. Stay safe. Uh, don't get, uh, you know, keep your six foot distance from people. Uh, and I look forward to when we can see everybody in person again. God bless.